Hello and welcome to this video on longitudinal confirmatory factor analysis. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials usually related to a multivariate statistical methods such as structural equation models, factor models, latent class models and multi-level analysis. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also, please don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my free weekly newsletter and other videos and workshops. In this video here, I want to provide you with an introduction to the idea of applying confirmatory factor analysis to longitudinal data. It turns out that factor analysis is not only useful for analyzing cross-sectional data or data from a single time point, but it's also a very useful tool when you have repeated measures data. And the reason is that confirmatory factor analysis is very flexible and allows you to model a lot of the specific complex features of longitudinal data in a very convenient way. And also confirmatory factor analysis addresses the measurement error problem. And so with longitudinal data, we are interested oftentimes in true changes across time. And so we want to make sure that any changes that we see in our variables over time cannot be explained solely by measurement error. So that could happen that you have measurement error that results in differences in your variable scores over time, but those differences really are deceiving because they're not reflective of true inter-individual differences or true changes across time, but they merely reflect differences due to measurement error, or we could say random fluctuations. And so confirmatory factor analysis allows you to separate true change from fluctuations that are only due to random error. And then moreover, confirmatory factor analysis also allows you to separate long-term changes that are more enduring and more reflective of trade uh, changes over time from situation specific fluctuations that might be due to situational influence. And so, so are many, there are many, many possibilities for um, modeling longitudinal data with confirm confirmatory factor analysis. And so here I want to provide you with a an introduction and then you can check out other videos on this channel. I have playlists on longitudinal analysis where I cover other models that are more complex as well. So here I'm going to focus on a very basic model for multiple indicator data. And so let's assume that we have three indicators or observed variables, for example, for measuring subjective well-being. And here we have the three indicators at the first measurement occasion. And then we have the indicators again at a second time point. So the same, maybe three items for measuring subjective well-being or positive affect are measured at time one and then again at time two. And so in a longitudinal confirmatory factor analysis model, we would then have a latent factor that represents true inter-individual differences in subjective well-being at time point one. So that is, so say, the common true score variable for the subjective well-being indicators at time one. And there's measurement error also as reflected here in these indicator-specific epsilon variables. They reflect measurement error. And so this allows us to separate true score variance, true inter-individual differences in our construct from measurement error at a given time point. And then we can have the same measurement model at time two. We again have a factor that reflects subjective well-being or the subjective well-being state, so to say, at the second time point. And we can have measurement error variables that reflect random measurement error. The parameters lambda here are factor loadings. So they would be estimated as in a conventional cross-sectional confirmatory factor analysis. Um, maybe one important difference is that typically in longitudinal CFA, we test whether the loadings are time invariant, uh, meaning whether they are the same for a given indicator on different measurement occasions so that we can establish measurement equivalence or as we say, measurement invariance. And that's important for the, uh, for the comparison or for making comparisons across time with regard to the latent variables. So we typically would like to see 
that the loadings remain time invariant or remain the same across time so that we can compare the factor um, metric or so, so that the factor is in the same metric or across time. And then moreover, we also like to see time invariant intercepts or additive constants in a longitudinal CFA model so that also the origin of measurement remains the same for a given indicator. So we want loading invariance to have the same units of measurement across time and we want intercept invariance typically so that we can have the same origin or zero point of measurement. And that's important if we want to make, for example, comparisons of latent means across time so that we are not comparing apples to oranges. We want to make sure that tau 1 and tau 2 are measured on the same scale with the same origin of measurement and the same units of measurement so that we can compare the means, for example, with regard to the latent factors. In addition, in this model, we estimate uh, typically a an across time covariance or correlation in the standardized solution for the latent factor. So this is a latent correlation parameter that is being estimated in the model that allows us to determine the stability of inter-individual differences across time. So for example, if we measure subjective well-being, we might be interested in knowing how stable are inter-individual differences with regard to positive affect, are people who are happy at time one or do do people who are who have high positive affect at time one do they tend to maintain so to say that level um, do they tend to be the ones that are happy at time two as well or is there a lot of time specific fluctuation across time does the ordering of individuals change much across time for example due to situation specific influences or something like that. So we can determine the stability uh, of the constructs with regard to the covariance stability by estimating the relationship or association between the factors across time. And then furthermore, we can also include latent means in our analysis. So we can estimate the mean or expected value of tau 1 and tau 2 and compare those means across time. And Again, this is something where um, before we can do that, we would want to make sure that we have established a sufficient level of measurement equivalence across time with regard to factor loadings and factor intercepts so that those means can be meaningfully compared across time. For example, we might be interested in knowing whether subjective well-being changes as a result of an intervention or event when we have longitudinal data. And so we want to maybe compare those means across time and see if they are significantly different. And then also we can include or what is typically included in such a model are the variances as parameters for the latent factors. Those are the true score variances that are estimated at each time point. And this allows us to also look at inter-individual differences that are true inter-individual differences because the variance of tau 1 and the variance of tau 2 are free from measurement error. Measurement error is estimated here for, or the variance that is due to measurement error is estimated here at the bottom, so to say, for those epsilon variables. And so these variances here are latent variances, true score variances that are free of measurement error. And so then we can look at whether the true differences between individuals changed across time. For example, again, as a result of an event or treatment, was there an increase in variability, an increase in true individual differences, or maybe a decrease as a result of an intervention? Did people become more similar with regard to subjective well-being across time, or did they become more different with regard to subjective well-being across time, or um, some other construct that we are studying. So you can see that this model allows you to address a whole bunch of um, important questions or relevant questions that you might have with longitudinal data. And again, one advantage is that this model allows us to separate out measurement error variants so that we can look at the relationship across time um, regardless of measurement error or so say while taking into account measurement error so that this correlation here 
only reflects the true stability and that we don't underestimate the stability across time. And then also when it comes to comparing the variances across time, it is useful to do this with regard to latent variances because again, they're free of measurement error. So that's a useful thing to do. And then also this model allows us to test measurement equivalence across time, which is an important prerequisite for making meaningful comparisons of means and variances over time. I have a separate video um, here on this channel where I show how you can test longitudinal measurement equivalence in the M plus software for a model like this. So check this out as well. And then as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there are many, many more different kinds of longitudinal CFA models. There are growth curve models, there are latent state trait models, there are latent autoregressive models and latent change score models, so many, many other types of models. And on my channel, you can find a lot of videos on these different classes of uh, longitudinal CFA models. I also have a playlist on longitudinal structural equation modeling that you can check out. And also please don't forget to check out the description for additional videos and workshops, and I'll see you next time.